welcome. We're going to be talking about AI, artificial intelligence, and we're going to be talking about a little bit about ChatGPT, but that's not the only AI bot that we're going to test out. We could test out some other things. Um, Chris, last night, I'm sitting in a parking lot in Ventura waiting for my daughter to wrap up mock trial because she has to do it after school and she she's doing this competition and I'm sitting there with my MacBook um, writing a book on chat GPT. It's like, so now I'm on like chapter 11 and it, it's only got like 14 chapters. And so what I'm asking, oh, I still have my shades on. Um, what I'm asking is I'm asking these questions. It's about, it's about the, the title is this just as people jump in. The title is "What Worries You Masters You," and it's a it's a saying from John Locke, the the British English philosopher yeah. back in the day, right? And so I've outlined this whole thing using ChatGPT. Then each chapter is being expanded on through ChatGPT, and then I'm taking it through its own filter, and then I'm going through and making sure that the references are right, and then I'm tweaking everything out. I'm like. In one week, because I had to go every evening to mock trial, yeah. which I've been talking yeah. to you, by the way. That's I'm sitting in the parking lot talking to you. That's a call. <laughs> That's why. Um, this whole week, my daughter kept on advancing into mock trial. And so that's what I've been doing in a week. It's taken me a week to write a book. And I'm like, this is this is insane. This is, it is. It this is, is pretty cool, yeah. man. So yeah. uh, anyway, Can I with that. On mock trial? Yeah, sure, sure. What was so, your question? Again, lots of random stuff here, but there's an AI service that's rolling out. It's an in-ear earbud for attorneys. In real time, everything that's said, it's searching against all legal databases and making suggestions on arguments real time to them while they're in the courtroom. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yep. Dude, that's insane. That's like having, yeah. well, that's actually like having Jarvis from Iron exactly. Man, from Marvel. Yeah. It's like, Jarvis, uh, I, I'm in trouble. Where, which way do I go right now? So. Yeah. Do you want 100 attorneys in your earpiece? Or, yeah. Uh, I'd be like, Jarvis, is Chris telling me the truth right now? Or is he pulling it's, my There mind? you go. And if so, send me the link because I want to watch it on my glasses. Uh, all right, everyone. I'm going to just need a pair of glasses. So, everyone, welcome. Let us know what city, state you're from. And tell me the weather because... It's been crazy weather out there. I think it snowed and froze in Austin about a week and a half ago. Hot, cold. Where are you at? Let's start with Chris. Where are you at, Chris? Denver, Colorado is 14 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. Way too cold. A uh, little bit of snow last couple of days. Just way too cold. That's cold, dude. But, I mean, it typically gets cold. Trenton, how far are you from Chris, man? Um, Probably just straight up by 25. Probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Nice. You guys should Without have traffic. With yeah. traffic, we're going to 35, yes. 40 minutes. <laughs> Same weather. Nice. All right. I'm, it's windy. It's about 60. It's been colder lately, but 60 is actually decent. Uh, so there you go. I'm, I've been testing so much stuff out. Guys, I'm going to go to Chris first because Chris is who I go to for AI. And then Trenton's who I go to to be like, Dude, I just learned this. Break it. So uh, that's that's how it works, guys. So, you know. So, Chris, where do we start with AI? Because ChatGPT is not the only one. No. Do you mind if I give just maybe the one-minute history on why I'm even here talking about this or how we've used it over the last few years? Beautiful. Um, so we've been using different parts of AI, machine learning, uh, robotic process automation, machine vision, all these things that bubble up into the AI buzzword in the corporate space for the last years. Uh, so we've done ML and AI conversions inside of mortgage, insurance, real estate, healthcare. Uh, we've done one of the top cardiologists in the world converting to where machine learning and artificial intelligence makes the recommendations to doctors and to nurses. So they spend 80% of the time with patients instead of on paperwork in the back office. So we've been working with a lot of this stuff before it was chat GPT, before it was runway ML, uh, before it was these publicized tools, and even using the previous versions of GPT through their API and through some of the, the research licenses and those. And so 
for us, we've been able to see the way that this changes the way we look at how we do, how I do my job, how our teams do their jobs, everything from getting reviews from clients to writing LinkedIn recommendations to actual full-on chatbots and digital human interfaces where you're talking to somebody or an avatar of somebody and it's interacting with databases. And so for us, it's been seeing this for years and working on it for years and have clients paying us to build this stuff for years and seeing how it's affecting. And for us, like even as part of the digital marketing company we have, it's removed entire job categories. Entire categories of people are not needed anymore because now our customers can use these tools that we're going to talk about today. And it's tremendous savings. Like our customers are saving about $1,000 an hour for the stuff that you were talking about where they could go and create content and very quickly create layouts, that eliminates half of the entire process, say, of building a custom website or uh, refreshing blogs or SEO content. And so it doesn't take away everything, but it's moving so quickly. Um, this is just a, it's a started as a passion project years ago, and now it's turned into commercial projects. And we've installed it inside of every operating company that we work in, wherever it's applicable. And it continues to change every single week as more things get connected. So super excited to talk about this. Thank you again. Um, but wherever you want to dive in, I mean, the chat GPT is super fun. There's so many things you can do with it. We could dive into GPT-3, which has more controls. Let's let's start with chat GPT, go to GPT-3. This way, Trenton can come yeah. in and show a little bit of what we're doing on the real estate side of things as well. And then yeah. from there, we can progress into Maybe Dolly. I don't know if you've got Dolly up or yeah. or other other things that we've tested out as well. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to share screen here, and we're going to look at ChatGPT. Um, it's a generative pre-trained transformer, which nobody cares what the GPT really stands for, but it understands very much of information before 2021. Um, and so, if you've been able to get into ChatGPT, again, I'm just going to share screen really quick um, and play with this. Super, super fun because you can ask it things, you can ask it to adjust, uh, like what, what Tristan said, um, what are the top, what are 10 chapters or what are the chapters in a book about whatever topic and it gives you the chapters? What should the topics be for the chapter? It gives you the topics, write a paragraph on this topic and it gives you the paragraph. And so do you have anything that you want to walk through specifically here? Yeah, I'd like to, well, here's, here's where I'd like to start because there's so many places we can go with this. I want to talk about content creation for businesses, business owners in general. And the thing, the things that I come across are, well, how can we use this for communication, whether it's newsletters, blogs, texts, emails, uh, that information. So if we listing can go along those lines, new listing. yeah, marketing remarks, right. For a brand new listing, if, if it's for real estate. So right now, what are the what are 10 topics for real estate newsletters for a beach community? I like that. I like where you started. And while it's typing it up, Chris, what's the difference between GPT and uh, ChatGPT and ChatGPT Plus? Because a lot of people saw the Plus one. Yeah, so the, the Plus is a paid subscription. Um, so you can get faster responses. You have priority with logging in. Uh, what a lot of people have seen with ChatGPT, the, this public free version is that it's locked up quite a bit. And so if you don't want to have it locked up, your options are either just because there's so many people using it is either just pay for the plus, which is I think 20 bucks a month or apply and use GPT three, which is behind chat GPT and is a lot more flexible. Um, or you can use an add on a Chrome add on called Merlin. Um, and Merlin's is something we can talk about right after this. that allows you to quickly load information into chat GPT to adjust it without having to copy and paste. And so it allows you kind of a faster experience and it has a little bit of a backdoor to chat GPT. If you can't get in through this interface. Nice. I like that. All right. So what what are what do we do from here? Because now that we have an idea, how do we go further down this rabbit hole to get something like a, a closer to a finished product? Yeah, and that's what's so interesting about this is mm -hmm. you need to break it down into little steps. Whereas there is a difference, uh, and again, we'll jump ahead a little bit. The next iteration is called multi multimodal AI, where it does a lot of this at once. You don't have to tell it what to do. But for today, if you say, hey, what are the topics for a real estate newsletter? Then we say, uh, write a four paragraphs for a real estate newsletter. Chris, as I mean, Trenton, as 
Chris is doing this. Could you put in the link to open dot, uh, openai.com so people know where to get? Because some people don't know how to get to chat GPT. Great point. So as you're putting this in, it's writing something. Now, the first thing you have to know in chat GPT, if you ask it the same question 10 times, there's a chance you're going to get the same answer 10 times. Whereas if you're using a different tool or GPT-3, uh, again, we could always look at that. There's more controls to make it introduce new topics, to tell it how much you want it to repeat or be creative. And so you have more controls with some other tools, but in chat GPT, so you have an article here. Now, I would argue you never use this article. This is, you don't just copy and paste what comes out. You use this as a framework. First of all, you verify facts because just because it's on the internet obviously means it's true. And ChatGPT is trained on the internet, so it has all truth. Uh, tongue in cheek there, it, some of the facts are wrong. And so you need to know your facts. Um, and then just be really specific what you're, what you're looking for. But to guide this, you can say, uh, rewrite this, rewrite it to be more warm and friendly and include a joke. Oh, nice. I like using and so, touchy and engaging. Ooh, there you go. I like that. Um, and so you get to adjust it to what do you want the messaging to look like? What do you want it to be? And you can also say rewrite it, um, rewrite this, and include four references with the URL. And That's so what I was doing, Chris, with the book. I was like, I need references. And then it's just like, I like boom. that. Jarvis, I need references. I can't wait till this is in my ear, Chris. This is what Just I want. Just wait. Just wait. Uh, so GPT-4, which is the next version, is multimodal. So the idea is you could talk to it. Potentially, you could text with it. It can jump different platforms and start accomplishing tasks instead of just this type of stuff. So it is coming very soon. So again, just gives you a lot of information. Uh, again, another thing just to be careful of, if it's before 2021 on the web, this is not going to have knowledge of it. Um, there's another way to work with that. Do you mind if we jump to a way to pull more recent information in really quick? Oh, hell yeah. And then I'll go to Trent to, to show you what we're doing so that people can see the actual process of where this is going. Perfect. So really quick, I'm just going to go to, uh, again, no, I don't care what the news stories are. I'm not trying to promote anything here. But let's say we just picked a random news story. And if I wanted to summarize this for a blog post, um, there's an easy way. If you have the Merlin add-on, this is just a Chrome add-on, it's free. Again, you can have a paid version. But what you can do is, I'm going to get out of this. You can highlight a bunch of text. So just take an entire story, whatever it is. Again, I'm not spending a lot of time doing this right. And then hit Command M. It loads everything into Merlin. So now it has all the information I copied and it's loading that into ChatGPT. And now you can say, uh, summarize this in four sentences for a blog post. And so I put in too much information here. So let's cut some of this out. Blah, blah, blah. So again, uh, this is a great idea, but, by the way, for, for social media. Absolutely. And it gives you the ability to take stuff and just very quickly summarize. Uh, it, but it's again, it's loading information directly into ChatGPT, and then you're able to interact with it very quickly with that and open all the different interfaces. I like that. And where do we go? For people wondering where we go get Merlin, uh, where do we Yeah, so you go? would just go to the, uh, just do Merlin Chrome extension. And you just go to the Chrome Google store and you just add the Merlin extension. It's free. Can you do me a favor while you have that open? Because I found a, a, a way for people to get into chat GPT that say, oh, I can't log in. I can't log in. I can't get in. Um, just so at least they can get in and pay for the upgraded version so they can show up every time. If you uh, can, you show people how to go on to a tab that's an incognito tab or, or mm -hmm. private tab, because if you do it that way, you get in almost every time. So you see what he's doing right there? Yep, just open an incognito window. And then when you're there, you're just going to put in this chat.openai.com, which I think is posted in the comments here. And if you log in through incognito, again, it's showing you, it's not always from a different IP address, unless you have like a VPN or a rotator or something. Uh, but there are some people that can't get in normally and it can get in through that incognito mode. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that's what's been working. We've been testing that out in different places with different people. So if you want to get in, try that. Now, as you're grabbing this, Chris, 
people are asking, well, what happens with copywriting and intellectual property? How do you go around that? Yeah, so I think the biggest things, you always have to be careful that something you post is your words or you cite whoever had it and have permission. And so the nice part about AI is that it's never been written exactly before. So it is a summarization. But if you're going to take somebody's ideas and say they're your own, that could be breaking the law or could just be unethical in general if it's not breaking the law. And so I think the most of the recommendations around that are cite wherever you get information from. And in these things, asking for citations gives you citations. You can say, here's where I got this information. Now, if you're just writing a post about an opinion about something, that can be your opinion. And you can take in other people's opinions, form your own. We've always, because we use this inside a lot of our operating companies, and they use it to formulate responses to emails or tricky tricky topics or, I mean, all kinds of ways you can use this. Even requesting LinkedIn reviews, writing reviews for people is super easy to say, uh, write a LinkedIn review for this person, copy and paste their bio and experience in a couple words about them, and you have a framework to work with. But even in that, never just copy paste, always reread it, put your own spin on it, make sure it's your personality so you're not copying somebody else's. Yeah, that's it, man. That's very key to this. I have a something to add here as far as uh, people wondering what else they can do, because I, I think they're sometimes limiting themselves as to what this can actually do. And then when you start limiting yourself as to, well, you know, there's, what can you do with this? I don't know if I want to use this. It's just a distraction or it's not whatever. The challenge I think is that you have to take a look at this and say, how can I, how can I strategically use this to grow and scale whatever it is that you're working on specifically? And, and sometimes you use this most of the time, Chris and Trenton, I use this to prompt me so that I don't have to start from scratch on creation, right? I, so I very much agree with you on that. We've I've operated in a world where it's much easier for me to adjust a straw man, something you start with, than it is to figure the whole thing out. And so even the idea of uh, what are three business ideas to connect to these three different topics? If I would bounce that off an advisor or a board, there's no harm in asking that to chat GPT and seeing what it comes up with. And so yeah. I've got a ton of opinions on speed dial with chat GPT, whereas constantly I'm bouncing some idea off of two, three, five, 10 people a day to see what they think. I've got my thoughts. ChatGPT is a huge database of other people's thoughts. I love that. And then some people said paraphrasing it through something like Quillbot. Yeah, we use Quillbot as well. That's a good one. And I know Trenton, you use Hemingway as well, which is also a great one. And somebody brought up uh, Jarvis, uh, Jarvis AI, which we we also use. Chris, how do you compare this to Jarvis? That's probably the biggest question we get. Yeah, so Jarvis, I would compare Jarvis probably a little closer to GPT-3, where ChatGPT is a super clean, easy interface for somebody that doesn't want any controls or levers. Whereas you think of like Jarvis or GPT-3 or some of these, you have more levers you can use. It's not just a type interface. You can also set sometimes models, context, repetition, creativity, and they, they call it different things. So I think Jarvis has a little bit more power. Um, so they're all a little bit different depending on what you're going through. I mean, there are some that take like the chat GPT-esque and again, layer in uh, law or accounting or other databases along with it to have more specialization. I think Jarvis and chat GPT are more, or, I'm sorry, GPT-3 are more flexible in the controls, but chat GPT is just super easy for the public to use and get to know these technologies. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll go to Trenton really quick, Trenton, and then we'll go to, to GPT-3 because I want to see that, how you're using that. Trenton, when you're using chat GPT or, or any AI, what does that look like as far as developing it into an actual product? What does that look like? Yeah. Do you want to walk through like each kind of stage? Yeah. Let, let's take, take about five to 10 minutes so we can yeah. go through and leave some time for Chris to go through the rest. So... Um, I'm actually going to start with uh, Tome um, because this is where I kind of started with to get some ideas. Uh, it's Tome.app. Um, but what I use this for, it's kind of like ChatGPT in a way, but um, I used it to push out a kind of a, you know, presentation outline like for blog articles. Um, so I asked them to write an outline, um, you know, for a home ownership guide in Westlake Village. And I like that it kind of broke down into categories here. And this kind of helps start, you know, brainstorming which direction we want to go. 
Um, so there's different things that I kind of took from here and I, I played with it and did probably seven or eight different um, options here to basically get into different topics that I put into this Trello board here. And so what we kind of broke it down into is, you know, having like an introduction to a specific city. And so then I would write uh, with the help of Jet GPT and some other options, um, you know, some different things. So like an intro to this city would be kind of like an overview that kind of went over um, the community lifestyle, um, kind of going over what's there, you know, what the housing market's a little bit like, um, wrote a couple about, you know, the history to kind of get a better idea as to, you know, what the city used to be and now how it kind of came to be, you know, what the culture's like, you know, what it's like to live here. And so then that's just kind of like the intro. <clears throat> but then I have like finding a home in Malibu. Um, and this, of course, is one of Tristan's markets here. So um, this one would be kind of like a, you know, a guide for buyers and sellers on the actual market. You know, this goes through the different types of homes that are available. So there could be like an ocean view, it could be like a beachfront property to a hillside home, um, things like that. Um, then different ones for tips for new home buyers. And then we have kind of like, you know, choosing the perfect neighborhood and what some are the popular neighborhoods. So a full comprehensive, and I think it's probably about 25 to 30 different articles that we can then put together for each one of these cities. And so we've done it here, you know, for a few different ones. And here's the whole Conejo Valley. We have a specific one for Westlake Village. So these are all that I put here through ChatGPT. And then so I'm going back through and then I take each one and put it into here in Hemingway Editor. Um, and then I like to kind of go through and make sure that the reading level is more in line with what we should be at. Because if I take one that's directly from um, ChatGPT, it's a little, a little higher um, grade, like grade 12 is what it is pulling in from. I feel like, so I I like, feel like it bring... totally, you're right. You're so right about that. It feels a little scholarly sometimes, doesn't it? Yes. And so, and then I try to go in through here and put in my own words as well um, and try to just, you know, omit some words, a little bit more um, active versus passive voice, um, you know, try to get it basically to remove all the colors, but sometimes I leave like the yellow uh, just because I think that sometimes you can't get around that um, with how you write things. Um, and then like he kind of mentioned, I use uh, Q text as well uh, to put the plagiarism text in here to see if you know what's being plagiarized. So if I put this in here and did check, oh, of course it's gonna make me log in again. Um, let's go this real quick. As as we're doing this, uh, Chris, you're the one that told me about um, what's that tome? You're the one that told me about tome. So literally, as you're telling me, I'm texting Trenton. And I'm like, check this out. So that's how that happened, Chris, by the way. So, so we like, didn't discover that on our own. That's awesome. And so yeah, this will so. check for the plagiarism here. And then I can kind of go through and, you know, make some edits based on that. I like to use Grammarly as well um, to kind of go through, just make sure punctuation is correct. Um, you know, is the clarity good? You know, making sure it's still engaging. And then so after all that's done, I throw it back into here. You know, again, just to make sure that there isn't anything I can still edit uh, or remove to make it a little bit more simpler. Um, and then so once kind of the final step here is we put it on our blog page. And so here's a few different articles that we've, you know, kind of edited and then posted about. So like this one is, <clears throat> you know, cruising through Malibu, your ultimate guide to driving an ocean from paradise. Now, how did I get this header? I pretty much typed into ChatGPT and, you know, went through a few different options of, you know, write me a header for this, um, write me a more engaging header for this, uh, you know, less wordy or less boring, I'll type sometimes. So that way it kicks out a few different ideas. Um, kind of doing that right now with trying to update our header here as well as just seeing what different options we can put there. Um, but back to this. Um, so then we would kind of come through here and I break it down kind of with how ChatGPT kind of did it. Um, the very first one I wrote about this was, you know, it it works, but I had to go back through and, you know, ask it to be longer, um, ask it to be a little bit more detailed, um, you know, give a little bit more information type thing. And so 
it went from just kind of being like a five paragraph thing to now having, you know, before you said out on the road, here's kind of just some things to know about, because obviously in Malibu, there's a lot of um, curvy roads, uh, winding roads near our shoulders to be kind of just conscious of uh, making sure you have things ready for you because you are going to be, you probably would be kind of stranded out there. Um, You know, then it kind of goes over like the top scenic drives and a little bit about each one. Um, And then obviously using an image kind of that represents that as well. Um, So that's one of the drives here is the Santa Monica one you can kind of do. And then also, you know, tips for a safe and enjoyable drive, you know, things that you can kind of expand on it. And, you know, I like the respect the environment one because it is on a lot of unique landscapes. You know, it's kind of like if you go to Iceland, you don't want to be like Justin Bieber and, you know, stepping on all the different uh, um, grounds that they have out there because of how rich of history they are. You know, you, <laughs> I, I always thought that, that was funny. <laughs> that was um, <laughs> and then so it's like take your time because there is a lot of scenic lookouts, but also at the same time, it's like be defensive because there's a lot of sharp turns and you could easily approach someone else's vehicle. Um, so that a nice right. kind of conclusion here as well. I have a question, uh, and this can yeah. go to either uh, Chris or Trenton. When it comes to SEO, how are we using artificial intelligence to help us refine the the SEO, the meta tags? That because that was a question, and I, I answered it, but I want to know what you two think. Trent, do you mind if I take that for a sec? Sure. Okay. So we've been in, um, one of our operating companies has been in the digital marketing SEO space for the last, say, four or five, five years. And what we've seen change in that is that where a client used to spend, say, $2,500 to $5,000 a month on SEO, now today, about 40% of that can be removed through these tools. But what we've seen is it has to be done very specifically. Like if somebody just wants to write a bunch of blog posts, they can and if they want to refresh their content on their site, which can help, they can. What we've seen, though, is that what you have to be careful of is that you still want to have an expert or somebody that knows what keywords to guide, how much keyword density there should be. And the AI doesn't always spit that out correctly. Um, and so getting the guidance, but then these tools can help write and refine that content so quickly that eliminates about potentially about 40% of the entire cost of, like, say, us executing SEO because the consumer can now do that, the person that would hire us. But then what we see in the SEO process is that the, the meta tags, the backlinking process, and some of the other page structure and the things that still affect it, that can't be done by these tools yet until somebody develops a tool for those. So we've seen about 40% of the entire cost of an SEO program can now be eliminated um, but you still need experts to do the other pieces unless you're that expert that knows those pieces and you can just eliminate or do the other ones very quickly. So it's not, it doesn't fix everything. And for some people, it could actually be more dangerous because if they start pumping out content, if they're not focusing on the right keywords or the right areas, they can be kind of doing a lot of content in a lot of areas instead of laser focusing on something that's going to get them a lot of results and rank ahead of other people. Yeah. All right. That dude, you answered that question very well. Now, we also know that specific to ChatGPT, the data on there only goes up to the end of 2021. Uh, is that the case? Is that going to change from what you know? What other options do we have? So from what I know is I'm looking forward to GPT-4 uh, because that, uh, if everything holds, that is a current uh, current process. Um, and so I don't know of one that has more available data that's on the scale of what GPT has. Um, it definitely may be out there. I uh, would love if somebody in the audience knows it or Trenton, if you do. No, nope. okay. Uh, we don't, perfect. So the other question then is, Chris or Trenton, do we need everything so far that we've talked about, which is Tom, ChatGPT, Jasper, Merlin, Hemingway, I don't even know what else we talked about. Do we need all that stuff? If we can narrow it down, what would we use just to simplify it? So again, just opinion. There's like, I had a list of 15 different tools we could walk through today that touch on different things. To me, it's like saying, do I need a fork and a knife? And do I need a sharp knife and a butter knife and a butcher knife? Depending on what you want to do, sure. And I think that's why these are so important is that, It's helping people understand what the tools are. And I I love the quote that it was a couple of weeks ago. um, I was listening to one of yours, Tristan. And when the wind changes, you change your sails. 
And the idea is the wind's changing fast. There's new tools. And if you want to stay up to date on what the tools are and understand what's going to help you in your world, your challenges and your opportunities and your skill sets are unique. And so I do think everybody in this day and age should always try to understand what are the top 10 used public tools, because those are going to change. The leaderboards are going to change. New things are going to roll out. And the idea of knowing what Tome is, in, in 30 seconds, you have a blanket presentation of something with tons of facts. And that can be great if that's what you do, having to just jump on the fly and know a lot of things. Um, and so in like Hemingway, I had not used Hemingway before, but seeing that and how it works more along the writing styles and those recommendations, that's very different from ChatGPT or GPT-3. Um, so my personal opinion is you don't have to know all of them, but if you can understand what the top 10 or top 20 do by watching something like this and do that once a month and just stay updated with what's out there, you're waiting for that little, that little spark of genius for your personality that says, I can use that today. I love that. Look, the question now that we're getting, now that you compared it to knives and spoons, by the way, that was awesome. I'm going to steal that, Chris. I like that. Uh, right. uh, I think we need a list of all of these and it needs to be changing every month. So I know that my team is listening in, uh, specifically Monch. Monch, can we get our team to to get this going so that we can give it out to people once a month and just release it in? And, and if you're asking for a replay of this, it's going to live in our website, the organization. It's organization.world. You can start visiting it now. We're in the process of making that go uh, more live than it is now. It's kind of like in beta. So take a look at that. We're going to have it there. We're going to be able to, you're going to be able to download this list of different spoons, knives, and forks, Chris, or sporks, whatever you want to use. I never there liked the spork. I never got the whole idea of the spork in elementary school. I hated it. Uh, anyway, uh, let's continue. Chris, uh, by the way, Trenton, that was beautifully done. I loved how you went from grabbing that and throwing it into then Trello. So every single blog has a little Trello card and then just transitioning it over. Uh, that That's awesome because we're going to be able to go to those Trello cards and update those every year if things change and then just change the content over where it belongs. So thank you for that, Trenton. And we're just getting started. One more time really quick. Um, yeah. So here's kind of like the template I was working off of. So it's a little bit easier to comprehend the differences of everything. But I pretty much with the help of Tome, um, broke down to have at least four kind of topics here for each one of these things. Um, education, I actually expanded a little bit more on because I did like the overview, the types of schools available in the cost of education, which I probably could just put all in one, um, which I might probably do anyways. But <clears throat> just to make sure that you're covering, you know, here's a good thing of what ChatGPT worked for is like, write me categories about exploring Malibu and it'll pop out things. Then it's like, okay, outdoor activities. So then write me a blog article about outdoor activities. And then, oh, I don't have anything in there. But it could be, then it talks about going to the beach. Or then it talks about going hiking. And then you could then expand on it. Well, what are the top beaches? What are the top, you know, hiking spots? Same with, you know, restaurants, bars, and coffee shops. Like you could have one separate one for each one. If it's a bigger city, you could have one that breaks down your top five you know, restaurants and other reviews of top five restaurants. Um, so it's what I like most about is that you can continue to expand. And that's kind of like what uh, Chris had shared. The very first thing is where he asked for topics. You can then take each topic and then break it down into three to five additional stories and topics from there. And I guess to even expand on, you know, do we need all these tools? I just don't think you want to only have chat GPT because of you want to put your own voice into it. You want to have a little bit of, you know, some of your own words in there too. And then also why I like this so much is just because what you think is reads well, you know, it could be difficult to read. And if someone's just trying to get some snackable content really quickly on their phone, you know, this could be too much uh, to comprehend. So it's good to kind of dumb it down, I suppose, just so that way it's a little bit easier to read for everyone. I love that That's too. Really great. I love that. Some great comments. Some, Trent. Some people said uh, that was brilliant, uh, Trent. You know what I missed, Trenton? Like when we first started doing this, you would say right off the bat. And now what the <laughs> hell happened to that? That was like you're saying. <laughs> well, this is terrible. I need right off the bat back. Right. Uh, 
Chris, anything you want to add to that or transition into um, GP3? Yeah, so I think transition, but I, I like what Trenton said there. It's very much the art. And it, I think that's part of our personal growth. It's the art of what questions are we asking? Controlling these today are very much what questions do you want to ask? And if you're getting stuck, try and find out if you can ask a different question. Um, and then the other piece is you can combine a lot of stuff. You could copy a bunch of texts and hit command M on a Mac with Merlin and say, write me three tweets and two one paragraph blog posts with this. And it all happens at once. And so depending on what you're looking for, how you want to capture what you're trying to produce, you can combine a lot of stuff too. Um, I like that. So switching, switching over to GPT-3, um, I'm going to share screen again here really quick. And hopefully this is helpful to you, even just understanding what some of the differences are. This may be something you use less often. Uh, this has been you have to apply to get into GPT-3, whereas chat GPT is completely open. Um, Chris, this, where would we go to apply for this? So people wondering how to do this, where would we go? Um, just go to this uh, platform.openai.com. And oh, when you try to log in, if you don't have a login, it'll say uh, join the wait list. And depending on your use case for it, you can get in very quickly or sometimes never. Um, this is a very, this is what's behind, in a sense, what's behind ChatGPT. Uh, there's a lot more controls here. And so, again, somebody asked a question of how does this happen with recent stats? Again, all these models cut off in 2021. So they may not have knowledge of something that happened last week, which is where you use Merlin to pull more recent information in. Now, this can do many different things. And you have a lot of controls here you get to pick what different model you want to use and they all have different strengths and different costs. You have, do you want to uh, complete something, insert information, edit information? Um, do you want to control length and repetitiveness and how creative is it? And do you want to penalize it if it repeats a concept? And so this gives you a lot more controls if you want to create text, but this can be used for many different things. This can be your intelligent chatbot. And so if we paste something in here, so chatbot is a real estate agent, reply to the conversation with the client below with the goal of learning more about their desires. And depending on these settings and the length that we give, again, this turns into a chatbot and says, here's how I would respond. And so if you say the goal is to schedule a showing or the goal is to find out if there's any other decision makers, you can give it so many different things. And again, this is just like ChatGPT, what you feed in and what you ask it to do, it's going to do. Now, but you just have a lot more controls with it. And so if you say, if you go over here to like the um, uh, like frequency as far as different options or temperature, as we put this to zero, um, it's going to repeat itself. And we put it really high, it's going to have different responses every single time. And so depending on how you're using some of these things, like if you wanted to plug this in with an API and have it start suggesting responses to all of your email chains and all of your CRM responses, you can do that today. And if you want it to be creative and have different responses every time instead of asking the same question over and over, again, that's where you change some of these controls. So this is a little bit more of a developer side of using a chat GPT, but depending on what you're trying to do, this might be an answer that you're looking for instead of chat GPT. Mm, I like that, man. I like it. And, and somebody brought up chat Sonic. Have you heard of Debbie? Uh, Debbie's the one that brought up uh, chat Sonic. Have you tried that? I haven't. I have not. No. Debbie, we're going to test out uh, Chat Sonic and then we'll let you know what we think. But she says it's better than Chat GPT and knowing the latest trends and news. It offers more advanced capabilities like up to date information on current events, creating art, and so forth. So I I'd love to take a look at that. And for those of you wondering where you can get a copy of this besides us sending it to you, I just put up a link to our YouTube channel, I'll put it up again, just subscribe there. This is actually playing live right now, right there. So it'll save it. That means you could slow it down, pause it and rewatch it. There it is. Just subscribe to the channel. That's my personal channel. If you have any questions, you can always reach out there. All right, back to you, Chris. I have a question so for you. I don't... First. Go for it. So that frequency thing over on the, the frequency penalty and everything like that, mm -hmm. I've noticed that when I would ask <clears throat> ChatGPT to write all these articles, they keep saying, look no further than, and it, it was driving me crazy. And I kept would have to say, like, write something else besides look no further than Malibu. And yeah. is this something in here that you could then tell it to only use like once? 
so there are there's ways to interact with this API in a even stronger way than what's here. Uh, if you look at the code that's behind it, so yes, you can when you add frequency penalties, it'll stop repeating phrases. It'll stop. So there are ways to control that repetition, more creativeness, and even when you're asking for you know, like asking the question of I want ten ideas for an article for a beach home. It has a tendency, ChatGPT has a tendency to give you the same 10 things in different orders or very, very similar. Whereas if you come in here and increase the temperature or uh, use some of the other controls, you start getting, if you hit enter three different times, you get very, very different responses. So when we were doing a mission vision values exercise inside of one of our companies, we were spending hours and meetings with a ton of people coming up with the right wording and all these different things. And somebody stopped and I wish I said it was me, but it wasn't. Somebody else stopped me and said, why are we writing this? Can we just use GPT-3? And we're like, dang. So we went and just put in the idea of values we wanted, said, write two paragraphs, change some of these controls on the right-hand side, hit enter, and then just said, make it more warm. And that's what we ended up using. And so it, even just considering some of these tools to make it more creative and to see how warm it could write it differently. Having some of those controls can be very helpful where sometimes it's hard to get chat GPT to think differently because sometimes it's giving you kind of the same canned answer unless you ask the question very differently. Got it. That's awesome. I like that. Um, there's also really other fancy stuff that some of this can do. I don't know if it's worth going through right now, but like even in chat GPT, you can say things like uh, write Python code for a ball bouncing around the screen. And it'll write all the Python code out. And then you can go back and delete a line of the code and say, this code isn't working. Tell me what's wrong. Paste the broken code in. And it will tell you this is the line that's missing because it runs everything back through thousands, hundreds of thousands of times so quickly that it's not just, I mean, if you ask it recipes, if you ask it uh, workout routines, I mean, there's so many different things you can do with it if you get creative. Again, fact check everything. Don't trust it came from the internet. You should go do it. Can I ask it to work out for me? Ask it to. I don't know if it'll work, but you should try. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> thanks for playing along, Chris. That was great. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yes. Larry, Larry says, if you're creating content, how you how can you control or make sure that uh, this is all using royalty-free art? So question on that. There's two sites that I, three sites that I love for art. Um, one is Dolly. One is Runway ML um, and the other is Mid Journey. And we use those actively for content creation, for adjustment, for making fun of people, um, and even for website creation. And so if, if we wanted to pivot some of the image stuff, I think it's a super fun area to look at different ways things can be done. I want to see that. I want to see that. And then Trenton, as he's shifting over, can you put the link for platform.openai.com so that they can go to GPT-3? Yes. And then, um, Debbie, I, I texted Chris and Trenton the link to, uh, so we can check out this other thing. What would you call it? Writesonic.com. That's what it ended up, uh, the, the website is. So we're going to check that out as well. Should be fun. Absolutely. And it really cool to be on here and learning from the audience. That is yeah, that's the best part of bringing so many people together. And it's Dolly. It's D-A-L-L-E, I think. That's Dolly. Yeah, so this is Dolly. Um, so labs.openai.com. So Dolly is image creation, image manipulation. Uh, we're also going to look through uh, MidJourney, uh, which is run through Discord. This gets a little more technical, but this is absolutely different for coming up with versions of things that's never existed, like website concepts and things that you could literally upscale, send your graphic designer and they can pull the content or the pictures out in Photoshop. You have the piece of website and then you use ChatGPT to create the text content. And so we'll look through that in just a second. And then the third one that I want to talk through is Runway ML. Um, this is so many different machine learning and AI tools to do video editing, content creation, uh, green screening, and stuff that just usually takes very advanced video editing to do. Um, and so you mind if we, does anybody want to start on Dolly or does anybody have anything crazy they want to see that's never existed? Um, I mean, let's play around with Dolly, dude. No, I want to see what, what could we do? Um, Trenton, maybe uh, uh, the future of what a, 
No, how about this? Give me a picture of uh, Iron Man's house in Malibu. Because, I mean, if you watch Marvel, he lives in Malibu, even though there's no house of his over here. But, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing Superman out front. Um, some cool things with Dolly <laughs> is... Cool. I like... You're mixing... Dude, you're mixing I know, DC I know. with... Into that. Let's see who caught it, yes. Unbelievable. Uh, is you can... This is really fun because you can control this. You can say, I want it to be a, a Monet painting. I want it to be an oil painting. I want it to be realistic, futuristic, pixel art. There's so many different things you can do with this. It's your creativity and how you come into it. So this takes a few minutes. Also with this, what you can do just to kind of cram more content in while we're waiting is you can take any picture that this creates or any picture you have, and you can have it either expand the picture with stuff that doesn't even exist. So you have a little picture and you want to show everything. Okay, well, that's doesn't really look like Superman, but. <laughs> okay, at least you got okay. the house right. <laughs> yes, so let's do, let's take one of these and let's edit this. Um, so we're going to edit this image. You can generate versions of it, but I'm going to edit this with AI. Let's pretend I uploaded this image and this was a listing photo and I don't want this backyard. I want a pool and a hot tub. And so you just get rid of the stuff you want. Um, and we say a uh, house in Malibu with a hot tub and pool in the yard. And while he's doing this, yes, we're going to get a list for you and I'll probably give it away as well. So as we, as we collect all of these, we'll make sure to put it on a nice PDF download for, for all, for all of you. Somebody said, well, I'm Brian. <laughs> Brian said mixing DC with Marvel credibility is now lost. <laughs> I didn't have best, any credibility. Uh, didn't matter. Best, best comment of all. Dude, by the way, when you're tuning in, Chris is really an AI, so we just have to correct him. Like Chris, no. So that's all. I that's just a, that's why. Okay, thank you. Damn smart. So it's machine learning. <laughs> it's machine learning. I had somebody the other day. Uh, it was super funny. Uh, a good friend Woody. He's like, I don't want artificial intelligence. I want real intelligence. And so it's it's a weird misnomer, but yeah. That's so good. So, some of I these take that. a while. Um, Dolly, super fun to work with. The nice thing about a lot of these tools also is they have controls built in. I could say, show me two robots fighting. But if I say, show me a robot with a gun, it's not going to do it because it has the word gun. And so you have to be careful what you ask some of these. Uh, the goal is to keep everything clean. But also, if you let, say, one of your kids play with this and they ask the wrong thing too many times, they will shut your account down because you are oh. now going down a road that they don't want you oh. to. And so you've got to be careful with these tools. They have controls because some of the stuff is really dangerous or could be. Got it. So can we use these images? So you can use these images. Uh, you always need to be aware of terms of use. Most of the OpenAI stuff, they say that you need to cite that it was created with OpenAI in a, in a little piece or show what it was. And so you're citing your work. Um, so definitely know the different things that you're using. Um, but again, now you have the ability to edit photos and do whatever you want. And again, this house never existed. Those pools never existed. So you can upload a photo you actually have and edit it. You can also upload a photo of a house and say, hey, with different furniture, different color cabinets or different windows. Um, so, I mean, again, we're picking on the house part of this, but you're creating anything that you want in any type of a medium that's never existed. And we've seen people even on... Uh, like uh, Etsy or these art sites that they're posting things for sale that have never been made yet. And then as soon as you say, I want that, then they go make it. And so they don't have to, you don't have to make something and then take picture perfect pictures of it anymore. You can just create what your next designs are through artificial intelligence and machine learning. And you know, you can make it if somebody orders it. Dude, I can, uh, I can put furniture in a house. I don't have to use box brownie. I could just go here and be like, Hey, Fill this room with some nice chairs and uh, and a nice bed. Uh, question for you, Chris. Have you used ChatGPT for coding anything yet, or at least getting started with coding for you or your team? Yes and no. So we haven't used ChatGPT for coding. I've used GPT-3 for coding with my kids. 
um, because when they wanted to know if I knew Python, I showed them Python, but they didn't know that I didn't know Python. So I've used it to mess with them. Um, I've used other automation. I've built a little automation that actually plays Roblox. So when they want to play Roblox, it's not really me playing with them. I can do my work while it's playing Roblox with them. That's terrible, um, Chris. <laughs> terrible. I'm joking. Was, yeah, that is terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're really AI, Chris. See, there you go. That answered my question. There you go. Um, <laughs> Do you mind if we, unless if somebody wants to see something else in here, I'd love to pivot over to Runway, um, actually probably to Mid Journey because it has such a different capability yeah, of what you can do. Let's go to Mid Journey. And then I want to, at the end, I want to show how you can build a quick cadence for texting buyers or incoming leads from online or open house leads, just creating that cadence. Okay. So I'm going to try and cram a few things in there. Um, so mid journey is a little bit more technical than this uh, because it's run through discord. And so again, in that PDF, we can have the steps that you go through to get signed up. It's a free tool. Um, I have a paid account with it. And so when you look at mid journey, uh, you can see everything you've ever created. None of this has ever existed, but the way you actually control it is you go into discord and we're just going to join a channel. Now, you got to be careful. This is going to show everything that people have created. These are not my creations. Whatever you see on the screen, you can choose to get off this webinar right now if you don't want to see what somebody else created from AI, um, just because I don't know if it's going to be political or whatever. And so people create in these rooms and they ask, um, let's go into one of these, and they ask the AI whatever they want to see. Again, that's never existed before. And the way you control something like this, and again, these have never existed. So whether you want it to be a logo or you want actual people, uh, anything here, these are all AI generated from text like this, beautiful 30 year old red hair, American model, whatever you want. You can even say what type of camera it was taken with. What was the exposure time? So you have so much control. Now you don't have to say any of that. We could just say, right, let's just do this. Uh, imagine, and we're gonna say uh, UI, UX, uh, landing page for luxury real estate site, uh, blue and water. And then we'll say, uh, 1920 by 1080. Okay. That's, that's all made up. So this submits it and we're going to watch the actual AI process as it starts go through and actually get created. And again, you can put so many more controls in this process if you want to. And it's really neat because you can just scroll through these channels and see what other people are creating and what they're typing. Um, but the idea, and we'll pick on websites for a second because we built websites for years and years. If one of our clients inside of the cast will do the content through ChatGPT and will do this piece to give an idea of what they want the design to be, that is up to half of the entire cost of a website because that communication back and forth of understanding what people want, what they want to do, all those different things, that's a lot of time and money to go through. And so right away in a couple seconds, we now have these four versions of the luxury website. Now we could say none of these work, you can adjust it, but very quickly we can say, hey, this first one, I want to upscale that to make it way more high definition. So my designer can just pull the pictures out and put them in Photoshop. Or I want variations of this one. So I'm going to do variations. And all of a sudden, it's going to go and give me four more variations of it. And you can give different controls and give different guidance, change colors, add people. Super easy to do. But this just got submitted for four variations. And so if we scroll down here, we're going to see it's now creating four variations of it. And it's you can see it's going through its 55% done. It's continually going through the thousands of iterations behind the scenes. And then as soon as we're done, give me a second here. So we've got four variations of this. Now, again, the text itself and whatever you put under the headings, that's where you use chat GPT. Tell me what buttons to have. Tell me what the sections should be. What should the content be? Write the header, um, write the, the call to action. But this eliminates so much of what it takes in the creative process that you can very quickly say, hey, I want a designer to design me 20 versions of something and you have it within seconds. And you have so much control on what you want. If you want it cartoony, realistic, and this can make pictures of things that have never existed that look completely realistic. Dude, that's, that's pretty awesome. I love this. Yeah. This, is, this is really nice. Um, so trying to miss, I think we had a couple of questions here. Uh, 
feel like I'm ah no comments. I feel like I'm seeing into the matrix. I like this. Cut okay, so cut and paste to chat GPT. So what you would do is you use this with chat GPT. So what we try to teach our clients to do is if you want to work on the design, go here and here's how you come up with designs, dream, spend half an hour here, just figure out what do you like. And what's neat about this is you can put in URLs and you can say, make it like this. You can put in URLs and say, don't make it like this. And so it can go to other pictures on the internet or go to a website, look at it and make something similar just by putting the URL in. And so this gives you the structure for a designer and they can actually take these high def images when they're upscaled and cut and paste into Photoshop and into a web application. But then you go to ChatGPT and you say, hey, for my real estate website that is focused on A, B, and C, what should the pages be? And it tells you. And then it's, you say, what should the content be on the homepage? And it says, you need a header image, a call to action, a little blurb about whatever, who you are and testimonials. And then you go to ChatGPT and say, write the header blurb for me that's going to go on the homepage based on this and make it more warm. And so that process, like when you're creating a website, is a lot of back and forth with designers and creators and the end client. And now if somebody has a little bit of creativity and knows how to use these tools, they're saving about $1,000 an hour using their own time instead of paying a vendor for those activities. Nice. Uh, can you create brand? I've never used this to say, can you create a brand and logos through this? Like Absolutely. So if you would just say, right imagine, yeah, imagine um, this is going to be a logo professional. Uh, give me some ideas. What do you want the logo to be for? Right off uh, the bat. A, a banana <laughs> company. Oh, wait, no, right off the bat, a bat company, a baseball bat <laughs> company. Let's do, let's just play around with that. Right off the bat. We're just going to call it right off the bat, guys. Perfect. Yeah. Um, this almost gets rid of like graphic designers almost. So this is where I was talking about. There's entire categories of employees or contractors, even inside of our businesses in the last two years that are no longer needed. Because if you can teach somebody how to use this tool, you're correct. This became your graphic designer. And now the graphic designing manager just manages this and goes back and forth and helps people use it. Um, and so... Ooh. So the text generation of this isn't always perfect. It's more on the design side. Yeah. Um, but again, you can adjust any of this, figure out where you want to put things in, taglines. Uh, but it gives you a lot of control very quickly um, to figure out what you want to do. I like that, dude. That's really cool. And then can I, could I cram in 60 seconds of one other thing super fast? I know we're running out of time. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. So Runway ML is a tool that is free. You can have a paid account. And if we go back to actual, the, the tools, these are all AI and machine learning tools for video editing. Again, if you have a picture and you want to create more picture that never existed, it will do that. If you want to pull out screens, put screens in, uh, blur, change. One of my favorite ones um, is this, where if you have any video, um, you can do in painting. Uh, infilling. And so if there's anything in a video you don't like, cords behind your computer, I need to get that book off of your shelf, Tristan, in this uh, video afterwards, you upload an hour long or a 10 second video, and you can go in and paint anything like this yellow sign, um, you can paint on it, it'll just remove it in the entire video. Um, and so it allows you to go through and transform and edit things that normally you have to either pay somebody to do or know very complex tools for. Um, and so if yeah. there's a cat running behind here, you can just paint on it. The AI learns it and edits every single frame of the entire video and fills it in with things that are like Whoa. it around it. That's crazy. Dude. Wow. So if we, if we do just really quick this one in painting. And let's just load a demo asset. So let's just use that same lady. And we're going to get rid of this red thing in the entire video. So paint it, wait, and now when we play the video, it fills it in with things around it for the entire video. And so the idea of a lot of these editing tools are happening so fast now and they're free. Uh, a lot of the people that we use for video editing now can just use these and do 10 times more work in the same amount of time. Yeah. That's awesome. Dude, I love this, man. I just texted that over to a couple of people. So a runway. That is pretty cool. Now I need a list of all this stuff, man. I think we went, 
you went even too fast for me in some cases. I was like, I, I can't write that fast, Chris. All right, let's see what we got. Subscribe. This will be on My Head Hurts. Good, Sharon. That's what we wanted. Uh, YouTube channel. Uh, put up the link again. Subscribe there. It's actually already on there, so you could just rewind. It's playing live. We'll have the edited version. We'll probably grab a few different things. We'll make that list for you guys as well, the downloadable list. Chris, uh, if people have questions for you, how do people follow you? Yeah, the uh, best way would either be just follow Tristan and you'll find me through there. Uh, That's true. Or you can find me on LinkedIn, just Chris Tam, uh, or at our website if you want to join our newsletter, which is cast.services. There's no .com, so C-A-S-T dot services. Perfect. And just so you know, Chris is part of the organization too, which is that way we, that's why we put the link. So we'll be doing a lot more of these together and Trenton as well. He's part of our organization. He's our director of tech and you saw how he integrates things. That's the key part to this. Trenton, if people have questions for you, how do people get a hold of you right off the bat? I'm going to just make cards for you. You better bring that back. I'll try to. I'll try not okay, to think good. about it as so much, and I'll just naturally yeah, come no, out. No, that was the best part. Come on. <laughs> All right, so I put my email in there. So if anybody has any questions, definitely sh shoot it my way. All right, so this is part one. There'll probably be a whole bunch of parts in between throughout the year as AI gets better. I mean, I want to take a look at, Chris, my brain is slow. What's Google's? Google's new AI that they released? Is it BART or Yes. Brad, Bard, Bard. Mm -hmm. All right. So Bard. I heard, yeah. I heard it's so, it's very underwhelming. But that's how things start typically. So I'm excited to see how how that whole thing works because, in essence, this is why I'm excited. It could use all of Google's searches to just grab it instantly and just give us all the results. So the relevancy, you know, going back to 2021. That will no longer be a problem. I think it will be just extremely current to what's available. So I, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm, I'm excited for that. Agreed. And then from this, there were still another probably 10 or 11 tools that we didn't talk about uh, mm -hmm. that are kind of in this world that we use constantly. And so I, I think there's probably time if we want to do a number two or a number three. Let's go for part two for the rest of the 12, you said? 12, 13? Yeah, I think we got another 12, yeah. Yeah, by that time, we'll probably have like 20 more to go through. So uh, let's get, how many people are left still? We almost have 300 still. So I need a yes. Uh, did an hour cover it? So do people want a part two? Do we want a part two to this? Or is Chris crazy? Chris, you're not crazy. <laughs> Look at the chat. He gets blown up. <laughs> uh, I think I love that. So we'll do part two to this 2.0. We'll call it a part 10. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tam and Bowden 2.0. Uh, there you go. There you, that's I love that. All right, guys. Thanks for being on. We appreciate you. Thanks for all of this. Uh, Chris, Trenton, you guys rock, man. Thanks for doing this. Have a happy Friday, everyone. <laughs>